Spec Ops The Line can mean different things to different people. To some, it's a bona fide masterpiece, a damning indictment of modern military shooters and player agency. Others see it as a bit of a failed experiment, as flawed thematically as it is mechanically. And that seems to be the overwhelming focus of any discussion regarding the game, the narrative themes and whether or not the gameplay was successful or not in the delivery of those themes. But there is another aspect of the game's design which seems to get completely overlooked, an aspect which is loaded with meaning and thoughtful commentary, and that's the art direction. Spec Ops The Line's visual design is perhaps some of the best I've ever encountered, and it's absolutely criminal how little recognition it seems to have received. So join me as we explore how Spec Ops conveys meaning through visuals. There are some pretty obvious similarities between the events in Spec Ops' story about a failed US military venture into the Middle East and real-life events such as the Iraq and Afghanistan war, and it could be argued that the entire story is an allegory for not just those wars specifically, but just aggressive US foreign policy in general. Like Apocalypse Now, Spec Ops is a contemporary retelling of Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness, but where Coppola transposed the sources setting from Africa to the jungles of Vietnam, developers Jaeger have gone for the Middle East, with the obvious connotations of current events suggesting the idea that it's just another Vietnam all over again and that history is doomed to repeat itself. And what I love is how the game's setting, a Dubai whose towering skyscrapers have been enveloped by the destructive desert sands native to the region, acts as this wonderful visual metaphor for the West's failed attempts to introduce stability and democracy to the Middle East. Skyscrapers are like icons of Western ideology, giant immovable constructs that stand tall, rising above everything, the glass evoking a sense of transparency, shiny and glistening in the sunlight like beacons of prosperity. They are the quintessential symbols of affluence, freedom and democracy, the American way, or at least that's certainly what they use to evoke in Spec Ops. So whereas the city embodies American ideals, the sandstorm, coarse and blinding, ferocious and indiscriminate in its devastation, represents the complex, overwhelming and unmanageable politics of the Middle East. So that juxtaposition of a glamorous western soul city ravaged by a desert sandstorm is a powerful allegory for the West's repeated involvement in long and costly wars that they've massively underestimated the logistics of, or where they've severely misunderstood the nature of the conflict. But that's not the only way that the game uses the desert and the city to convey meaning. Sand is actually used symbolically a lot throughout Spec Ops, often acting as a kind of visual embodiment of the horrors of war. As you play the game, Walker and his squad mates will get more and more covered in not just dirt, blood and burns, but also sand, reflecting the lasting psychological damage that the war is having on them. It sticks to them, stays with them throughout the whole game, just like the things they've seen and done will stay with them for their entire lives. Look around you at any point in the open and you'll likely see a huge sandstorm surrounding Dubai, creating a walled-in effect. It gives you the impression of being surrounded with no escape from the conflict. And this theme extends to the indoor areas as well. Sand clogs the air, heightening the sense of claustrophobia, and is often seen pressing ominously against the windows to the outside world, while the sound of debris crumbles around you as if everything is buckling under the sheer weight of the desert. So the sand feels intrusive and threatening and when used in this way represents the oppressive and unrelenting presence of violence and conflict at all times. The ability to bury your opponents under huge volumes of sand is a recurring mechanic. Buildings, vehicles, even the corpses of civilian casualties are frequently seen to be totally enveloped by the sand and by the end of the game, Walker's hallucinations depict his squad mates literally drowning in it. So there is a persistent theme throughout the game of the desert, and by extension, war itself, consuming everything it touches. Sand is also used as a metaphor for the fog of war, the inability to accurately judge and assess your situation and make clear judgments during conflict. Walker's continually diminishing ability to make sense of who he is fighting and why, who is on whose side, this figurative fog of war is often manifested as a literal fog, a sandstorm which affects your ability as a player to perform, making it harder to move, aim, see your opponents and, most significantly, occasionally even making it difficult to differentiate your teammates from the enemy. So the way Spec Ops uses sand and the desert to construct its environments and convey meaning, I think creates a much more convincingly oppressive and overbearing presence of violence and conflict, and a more memorable one than most contemporary war games have managed to achieve. 
Going back to thinking about the skyscrapers as symbols of Western ideology, they're used in that way to add further context to the game's exploration of moral absolutism. Walker's unwavering commitment to his ideals, his refusal to consider himself and his actions as anything but what's right and what's necessary, is often reflected through the visual design of the environment. Just moments before the infamous white phosphorus scene, as Walker insists he has no other choice than to use the deadly weapon. That's white phosphorus. Yeah, I know what it is. You've seen what this shit does. You know we, we can't. We might not use have it. a choice, Lugo. There's always a choice. No. There's really not. Two huge skyscrapers loom over the scene like a physical manifestation of those Western ideals that are shaping his thinking, their tall and commanding presence reflecting the strength of his convictions. When Conrad, the main antagonist of the game, forces Walker to choose which prisoner of war he's going to execute, the Burj Khalifa, where Conrad is holed up, is glistening prominently in the sunlight, smack bang in the centre of the frame. Not only does Conrad being situated in the Burj Khalifa, the tallest skyscraper in the world, convey the importance Walker places on Conrad both as a man and as an objective, his presence in this scene emphasises how central Conrad is to every decision Walker makes, and in the context of this scene, where that decision is an abhorrent one, the building's presence just reaffirms to Walker that Conrad is the end goal and the ends justify the means. Whatever needs to be done to stop him is necessary, even if it involves committing a war crime. But as the war continues and the more atrocities Walker finds himself committing, the more post-traumatic stress disorder takes hold and the harder it is for him to convince himself that his actions are in the name of good. This is reflected in a nightmarish hallucination later in the game where the Burj Khalifa is on fire, suggesting, with a clever bit of foreshadowing of what's to come, that his mission is a lost cause, that everything he's fighting for is already destroyed. Post-traumatic stress disorder is another prominent theme throughout Spec Ops which, again, is brilliantly accentuated through the game's visual design. It's incredibly rare to find yourself moving upwards or climbing anything in the game. You are nearly always descending deeper and deeper into the conflict and as the game's events unfold and Walker increasingly loses his grip on reality, standing on the precipice of something like this evokes the sense that you're descending deeper into the horrors of your own mind as much as you are the battlefield. And that's really just one of many examples of some very powerful visual imagery to be found throughout the game. Perhaps the most famous example is during the White Phosphorus scene where after killing dozens of innocent civilians and the hundreds of soldiers that were helping them, your own reflection is prominently staring back at you in the giant glare of the screen. My personal favourite however is when Walker hallucinates the killing of his own squad mate and the prominent lighting behind you casts a huge shadow over the ground, simultaneously evoking both the sense that you're a shadow of your former self and that your actions are going to cast a dark shadow over your future. The colour palette is also used to great effect in relaying the themes of moral absolutism and PTSD. Most key scenes which depict Walker's belief in his own cause or where he makes decisions believing himself to be in a state of control predominantly take place during the daytime with bright sunlight and clear blue skies, a bright colour palette reflecting that sense of clarity. However, scenes which depict chaos, violence and the unexpected consequences of Walker's actions are far more likely to feature dark oranges, reds and even black conveying the nightmarish nature of their experience. There's also a gradual shift throughout the game from start to finish in which end of the spectrum the art direction tends to favour, a shift that mirrors the character's journeys in the narrative. Early sections of the game predominantly favour the brighter end of the colour palette reflecting the squad's belief that their intentions are noble. But as the game goes on and your squad's control over the conflict or even understanding of it slips further and further away, the colour palette shifts towards the darker colours as you start to learn the consequences of your actions and uncover the gritty reality of the politics behind the conflict. The game culminates in Conrad's lavish penthouse suite inside the Burj Khalif. The colours of deep sea blue are soothing and the vibrant colours of the fish tanks and plant life are comforting, yet at the same time there's something quite alienating about it. This scene comes as such a stark tonal contrast to everything that has come before it that it creates a real sense of uneasiness in the player, almost as if something isn't right, which of course it isn't. It's almost reminiscent of the theme of drowning or submersion again, except in this case it isn't sand, it's water. Perhaps it represents the way in which the war hasn't consumed Walker's body like everyone else we've seen, but instead has consumed his mind, and the unsettling feeling throughout this chapter reflects Walker's detachment from reality. But most significantly of all, Conrad, a decorated US colonel, a man Walker had previously served under and once looked up to but who is now a war criminal to be stopped at all costs, 
is holed up in a swanky penthouse suite. The contemporary design, the expensive interior decor, pristine furnishings, this is exactly the kind of affluent lifestyle promoted by Western ideals. How fitting then that Conrad, the very thing Walker has been fighting against this whole time, is embodied by the same thing he's been fighting for. So that's how I think Spec Ops The Lion conveys meaning through visuals. It's not often that you come across a game that's visual so acutely illustrate the themes of the story, let alone one that deals with such complex and challenging issues and does it so intelligently and evocatively. Spec Ops is often lauded for its ambition more than its achievements, but I really think the art direction is absolutely exemplary and deserves to be given the sort of critical discussion it's worthy of. But what did you think? Did you enjoy Spec Ops? Or are there any other games you think that have great visual design but are completely overlooked? Let me know in the comments. I just want to say a big thank you to a couple of great chaps who helped me with this video by giving my script to read and offering some really useful feedback and suggestions on how to improve. Chad Under and Joseph Anderson. These guys make some fantastic content. I really admire their work so make sure you check out both of their channels. I'll put links in the description below or if you go on my channel homepage you'll also see them both in my recommended channel list along with some other great channels that I'm a fan of. And also a big thank you to all of my subscribers. Uh, the response to my Hitman Absolution video was just fantastic. Fantastic. I wasn't expecting much from it, but you guys shared it out there on places like Reddit and that has such a big impact in terms of views and growing my channel. So thank you to everyone who liked it and commented and especially shared it anywhere. Thank you and I hope you've enjoyed this one. Take care and I'll see you soon. Cheers.